everybody it is Ronnie with whip and chain today I'm going to show you how to make this adorable little pumpkin the stem is called I cord and I have a video that I'm going to attach to the end of this video so you can see how it's done but also I'll have it separate if you ever need it for any other projects so you don't have to look for the pumpkin video to be able to find it okay these pumpkins are nice you can make them in any color you wish and what's nice about this pattern, you can make it as big as you want. You can make it as little or as big. Okay. So first, I want you to know I am using impeccable yarn. It's just something I had on my supplies. And I love this yarn. Okay. The color I'm using is called Tweed. All right. So, with my handy dandy clover hook, six millimeter or J, let's get started. All right. Oh, make sure you leave a very long tail. You're gonna need it, and the longer, the bigger the project, okay? So, start with your starting loop. Now you chain whatever you want. Uh, I am gonna chain chain 21 because you will lose one stitch. Okay. Sorry, there's storms coming. If you can hear it in the background. All right, chain. I'm chaining 21. You chain whatever you like. Actually, I'm going to just chain 11 since it's going to be a sample I'm showing you. All right, there's my 11. Now, we have these little, I call them the little lumps in the back on each stitch. See them? Each, each chain has one. Every single one. All right. So if you have a chain 11, you'll have 11. And if you have a chain 20, then you'll have 20. But the one at the very end is attached to your one that's on your your hook, your crochet hook. So we can't use the first one. So you always go to the second chain from the hook. And that's why I said chain that one extra. So find the second chain and turn over one, two. And you just push your crochet hook in there and you do single crochet all the way down. This is the hardest part of this whole project. Okay. Take your time. Once you usually get a couple, they start popping out so you can see them. Make sure you just do single crochet all the way down. I am a slow crocheter, so I've learned a long time ago that crocheting is not a race for anybody. It doesn't matter who gets a project done first. As long as you are all happy with your project, that's really what matters. If memory serves me right, Maggie is a slow crocheter too. Lauren, on the other hand, I've watched her crochet. She's fast and she's good. Lauren is Maggie's daughter. And forgive my throat, my son took me to Field of Screams last night. And I did a ton of screaming because, man, did they scare me. But it's always nice to spend time with your children. If that's what it takes, that's what I'll do. And then when you are finished, turn it 
turn your work. And the whole point of doing the back hump is it makes the bottom edge look nice. All right, very important. All right, I want you to chain one before we start. Okay, and then you just go in. I want you to see each chain consists of a V. There's a front one closer to you and there's one farther away from you, okay? We're going to use the back one, the one that's farthest away from you. And you're just on a crochet, back loops only, all the way down. For some reason, I'm fumbles today, but it's all right. Better rather be a fumbler today than on a work day. Today is Sunday. Hear the thunder. Apparently some major storms are coming. And make sure you always get that last one. Or your pumpkin will be crooked. And that's all you do. You turn, chain one, then you do back loops. Back loops only, guys. That's what will give the pumpkin the ridges. Okay. You should always know your count, and I do suggest that you you should once in a while count to make sure you didn't miss a stitch. But that's up to you. I'm famous for liking the count, especially when it's a longer project, a lot of stitches. Because the last thing I want to do is frog it out. I'm going to show you one more time what we do. Okay. You turn it. Chain one. And back loops. Okay. It'll have the ridges in it really pretty. Okay. Now, you keep doing it until you get a width of a length three times of the width. Okay? So, three of these. Or you can just pull it up and float it over. Mine might be a little longer, but that's okay. Not by much. All right. So once you have this, you at the other end, you also leave a very long tail. See how I have long tails on both ends? Okay. So I want to get darning needle. Okay. Do you know which end you started from? Would it be this end? Or would it be that end? I, this end. Okay. So what you want to do, fold it together. Thread your needle. Yeah, I'm not the best at doing needle threading, but that's all right. There we go. 
as long as you eventually get it, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So we're going to line it up. You're going to take your darning needle and try to go through the full stitch. But this is not perfection. If you miss one, it's really okay. Miss three, it's really okay. So I wanted to tell you a few reasons why you watch me do this. Why I decided to start this Facebook group. Um, it's Whip and Chain with Maggie. Maggie has been a very good friend we have been friends for a couple years now, and she is one of the nicest, kindest people in this world, as far as I'm concerned. I'd be absolutely lost without her as a friend. If she's able to help you in some way, she absolutely will. She designs beautiful t-shirts. She makes them for our business. Lauren um, does that roller derby. I haven't seen her in person, but I've seen pictures. And from what I can tell, she's very good at it. I used to be good at roller skating. Now I kind of skate on my backside more than I do on my feet. Now, usually at the end, I'll go through it twice just to secure it. Okay. And you'd have to really look to be able to tell where it was seamed. But when you're a crocheter, you always can tell. Now, I'm a do it four times kind of person. So we're going to hide. Our yarn in the seam because this is on turn turn right side out then that's two and four. When you feel it's secure enough, just trim it off and then turn it right side out. Here's what we got so far. Okay. Now take your other end. I'm going to thread your needle. Okay. Now we're on, this will be the bottom of the pumpkin. We're going to take our needle and at the end we're going to weave 
our needle in and out. Okay. And do this all the way around. Don't need to be perfect. Just make sure you go all the way around. Okay. Once you go all the way around, you pull it and you cinch it shut. And just to verify that it's shut and it's good, I always suggest to run your needle through it a couple times. how nice it is once it's shut. Okay. Once you're, you're happy with the shut, then let's put to set the needle down. We're going to stuff it. Once you have it filled to where you want it, take your needle, put it through the center, and run it up to the center of the stuffing. Okay. See? And pick a starting point. I try to find where my seam was, that way I know that's where I started. And it don't matter if you push it in a little bit because it's not all be cinched again. And then we just weave our needle again. And this is reason, the reason you leave your long tails. And I made the big mistake of trying to do this when I cut the yarn too short. And um, when there's a knot in it, it doesn't work well. So try to remember that or just start one solo instead of trying to put a knot in there.
and I'm at my beginning. And guess what? We cinch it shut. Okay. Cinch it shut. I suggest you do the same thing that you did on the bottom. Go through, make sure it's shut really, really good. Okay. When you're content with it, I put your needle in through the center, all the way down to the bottom. Let it come through the bottom. And you can tighten this, and that is what gives you that dip. Okay. And then you can secure it at the bottom. Are my kids out there barking? Okay, I paused because they started barking like crazy. Anyway, here's your pumpkin. And then you can squish it however you want to get it even or odd. Like, all pumpkins are different. I'm going to be attaching the video on how to do the eye cord. But here's this. And what you should do with the top... Or the bottom I like my my stems to be in a little loop like this so what you do is I recommend you don't cut in the you don't hide the tail you bring them both down together okay And try to thread it together, but as you can see, I'm not perfect with it either. Guys, I will try very hard to never delete bloopers because I think it's important for you to see that we all make mistakes when we crochet. Okay, so this, this is my top, okay? So I'm going to take this and just all the way through. Okay, see how that stem just got right on there like that? Now, on the bottom, you can push it in, you can do it however you like. Really, really stinking cute, ain't it? Isn't it? Sorry. And then I just suggest you secure off at the bottom. When you're happy with your secure, and cut it off. And here's your other pumpkin. Now that's two ways I showed you how to do it. All right, that's the loop. Or you can do the stem like this. You do the stem like this. Your tail, you have to weave in. And then you just use the other piece of string going down to the bottom and secure it. But two different colors, two different sizes. I filled this one more. I filled this one a little less. I wanted to see if I'd like it less or more stuffy. I think I'm a fan of the more fluffy ones, but I still like it. And I like the fact that you can use any color on these. They look great. All right, guys, I'm Ronnie with Whip and Chain alongside Maggie and Lauren. If you learned something from this video and you like it, please hit the follow button and also come find us on a Facebook under Whip, W-I-P, and Chain. Right now the cover page is The Pumpkin. And please join us. We'd love to see you there. Have a great night. Bye. 
Hello everybody, it's Ronnie with Whip and Chain. Um, today I'm going to show you how to make these I cords. They're good to be used on stems for um, pumpkins or stems for other projects that you're making. And everybody seems to be afraid to do it. I'm not perfect at it, but it just takes time and you can get it. It's really, don't ever be afraid to try. That's really what I'm trying to say. So let's, let me show you what I'm doing. I'm using my clover hooks that I love, the 6.0, but you can use whatever hook that you want to use, okay? So you wanna first start with your circle. Okay. I'm going to chain three, okay? One, two, and three. And the one thing I do want to tell you is pick a tension and try to stick with it. That way it turns out pretty good, okay? All right, so second chain from the hook. Go in the hook, in the chain, pull through. Now you have two on your hook. And then go in the third and pull and come up. And now you have three on your hook, okay? So what you need to do, try to keep the tail out of your way and keep your your yarn that you're using on this, the side that you're pulling from, okay? So what you want to do, you want to take the first two off the hook. And while they're off, Try to pinch them, okay? And you grab the yarn, grab yarn, pull through the first one, okay? Then you slip on the second hook, still pinching that one that you're not using, and you pull through. Then you grab on the third one, you wrap it, and you pull through. And that's it. You just keep doing that. Let me show you again. Okay. Take the first two off. It's a little loose. There we go. Take the first two off. Pinching it. Grab the yarn. Pull through your first one. Put the second loop back on the hook. Wrap it and pull through. Then you take your third one and you wrap it and you pull through. Can you see? Look how neat that looks. Let's do it again, guys. Now, if anybody's trying to do this and you're struggling, just go on our page and message myself or Maggie and we'll be happy to help you. Take your first two off, wrap and go through. Put your second one on. You wrap, and go through, and your third one, and you wrap, and you go through. And it really don't take long for this to build into the stem that you need. I want you guys to see one more, just to be good. Take off your first two loops, keep the third loop on, Go through one, put on your second one, wrap, go through, put your third one on, and wrap. Okay, so when you do decide you got the length that you need, cut a long enough string, a str cut a long enough tail, you wrap it. And then you pull through all three loops. Okay? And that's how you do the stems. Okay? Right. Guys, thank you. This is how you do the I cord. Along with me, Maggie, and Lauren, we thank you for watching our videos. Please like and subscribe. And we're on Facebook under Whip, W-I-P, and Chain. 
and we look forward to seeing you there. Have a blessed day.